once again, I appear in front of you guys. <clears throat> this time, I'm alone. Oh, it's a new channel. And let's see how this goes. I've got your questions here. So I'm gonna start answering questions through my Instagram and that. You just send me what you wanna ask and we'll get to it. So we'll start this off as, how you all doing? Don't be confused, some are gonna be solo, some are gonna be with Mick, it just depends. But I always wanna drop something for you guys, because it's a pain for the channel, so I want you to get your money worth. So whatever you wanna ask, you can always send through if you wanna call up. I can do a live. I'm gonna call someone I think during this one. All right, so let's see the first question. So, first question someone's asked me, they said, how did you know Pasquale Barbara? Pasquale Barbara was a friend of mine. He was murdered in Sydney, and later on his brother passed away as well. These people were friends of mine. A lot of people talk shit about them, but I tell you what, Fucking stand up bloke as far as I'm concerned. I ain't gonna fuck what any cunt says. They, mate, you just call Pasquale all these names and you say he's a fucking dog and he's this and that. I've never seen paperwork on the bloke. All I ever seen was, you, you ask, a few people asked me what was he like in jail. I'll tell you a few scenarios. <clears throat> I was in a unit. There's about, fuck, maybe 50 labos in there. Heaps of Aboriginals. Long story short, they had dramas with Pasquale. I didn't know Pasquale at the time, you saw I met him, right? I heard the name circling in the system that he stabbed a few Aboriginals and stabbed a few Lebos and Aboriginals wanted to get him, the Lebos wanted to get him. Keep in mind, I mean, the Aboriginals were like that, very tight. The Aboriginals and the Islanders, I was very tight with in jail, very close. So anyway, I spoke to the Aboriginals, I said, what's going on? Because I heard, as a Lebanese delicate, you get to go from wing to wing so, you know, this is, I think, 2004, if I remember. Management called me up. They called up a guy called XT. He was the leader of the island. Uh, not all the islanders, but the islanders in that section, he was the head of them. He wasn't the leader of all the islanders. I won't say that. <coughs> and they called another guy. I won't say his name because he's actually asked me, calls me from jail, and he said, please, bro, don't mention my name on the podcast. He just doesn't want his name mentioned on the podcast. Aboriginal fellow is a very good friend of mine. He's a fucking machine. Still friends him to this day. He calls me from jail. He's doing fucking big lagging. Always calls me. Stayed in touch all these years. He's a very close friend of mine. So anyway, I get called down to the management. They're like, listen, Pasquale Barbara has just got here. He's in intake. We're about to clear him. He won't go to protection. He's stubborn as fuck, he's been to every jar, he's been fucking having it out every jar he goes to. And I said, yeah, what's the story with this bloke? So the governor's standing in front of me. And keep in mind, in my day, the governor was, he'll tell you straight the fuck out. He'll say, it's like this or like that. You wanna smack it out, no knives, go have it out. <clears throat> so you know, the governor's like, what are we doing with this guy? He goes, you're, you're the speaker for the Lebanese. These two fellas are here representing their race. We he's accept him in the unit and he's like, kill him, give us your word. If he comes in there, if he has to have a fight, he'll have a fight. Give us your word, no knives, nothing. We, we trust you guys enough to know that these aren't little kids and he's will give you a word and he's not a dog. So he doesn't have that like stigma with his name at that time. Now he's got this reputation. People say behind you, like God rest his soul, he's dead now. A lot of people talk shit and they try to call Pasquale a dog. I'm gonna tell you exactly how I met the bloke and everything about the bloke, all right? And I'm not talking good about the bloke because I'm scared of him. The guy's passed away, so he's not even here anymore. I just say things how they are. And this Barbro family, we're friends of mine. And what I mean by word, because they passed away and I don't know the other ones in the state, I don't know his brothers, but his father is a friend of mine and Ross was a friend of mine and Pasquale was a friend of mine. And I'm gonna tell you, 
I'm gonna set record straight about this family. So anyway, I said, so what? He won't get a protection. They go, mate, this guy's fucking, he's the only Italian in the system. He doesn't give a fuck. Cunt's punching it out. The governor told me straight out, he goes, this fucking cunt's got stubborn, stubborn head, mate. He goes, and he can knuckle on. He goes, the kid can fucking fight. He goes, I'm hoping he can come into your unit and can find a home here. Because we're doing nine years. They go, we hope he can settle here. And we don't have to keep bouncing him from jail to jail. And he's just becoming a nightmare for us to manage. I said, all right. I said, fuck him. And I'm telling you that, like, on my podcast, I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to explain something. On my podcast on YouTube, I don't get into everything because you see, didn't know how to ask me the questions properly. He'd always get me angry and I, oh, just fucking now I can read the questions myself and tell it how it is. There's no one to debate and over talk to me because I like to set records straight and have the floor to myself. <clears throat> so, you know, listen, I told the governor, bring him to the unit. I said, if, there's, if he's not a fucking dog, there's no paperwork. I don't give a fuck who's got a problem with this bloke. Obviously, they've got a problem with him because he stabbed a few people, he stabbed a few people there, bashed a few people, whatever he's done. It's not a fucking dog, far as I'm concerned. I'm accepting him into my unit, and if any nationality has got a problem with it, they can punch it out one-on-one -on -one with the bloke, they can sort it out. At this point, I'd already spoken to the two, like, ex and the Aboriginal fella. I said, boys, come on. Before he went down, this guy. he's not a fucking dog. He's had done some fucking bad things in the system, but he was defending himself. Every time he stabbed someone or bashed someone, they were trying to get him, so call it for what it is. You do the same with his fucking predicament. You go to a jail, they want to get you, you're going to stab him. They said, yeah, fair call. They go, what do you want to do? So let him come out, let him have a go of fucking whoever wants to have a go of him. Let him stay in the unit. They go, yeah, sweet. The Aboriginal fella, I'm going to say his name, is fucking hard as can't, punches on for days. Stand up guy, love him to death. He told me straight up, he goes, I'm going to pump this cunt. I don't even know Pasquale at this stage, all right? I'm fucking the number one so. Anyway, tell the governor, bring him up to the unit. He's right to go. You know, they went back to the unit. Fuck up, those one by. I thought they're not going to bring this bloke. I thought governor just changed his mind. I forgot all about him, sitting there eating, fucking playing cards, whatever was going on. Who walks in fucking Pasquale? <laughs> Big cunt too. He's that long hair. He had it all braided up. Fuck, he looked like he getting, there's going to be a handful of this bloke straight up. So I, I knew it was him straight away. As soon as this, this the fuck away he was walking up. I just knew this is him. Anyway, I go to the boys, I'm gonna walk up, I'm gonna talk to this cunt. So I walk up to him, cunt's a fucking hardest cunt, mate. Fucking didn't give a fuck. He gets me straight out, he goes, mate, I don't give a fuck, I'm not gonna protection. Just tell these fucking cunts, let's go. In the cell, blade on blade, fist on fist. Long story short, he had his, sorted out his drama, a few of the boys, smacked it out. I'm not gonna say who won, who lost, doesn't matter. They dealt with it like men went in the cell and dealt with it. This fucking bloke, straight out, ended up being one of my closest mates in there. Fucking walk like that, mate, in jail for a long time. We were just in Park League together two and a half years. And when he got out, we stayed in touch, stayed good mates. We ended up having a fall on that before he died. About five months before he died, we had an argument and I stopped talking to the bloke. I was still talking to Ross. I didn't hang out with Ross every day. Nothing like that. I was closer to Pasquale than I was to Ross. God rest his soul. But I'll talk to Ross as well. Sometimes we'd come over, hang out, have a laugh. Anyway, so I always stayed in touch with Ross. I stopped talking to Pasquale. And then fucking, when I heard he died, I was, I was upset to straight out. <clears throat> anyway, this bloke, I swear to God, one day I was sitting there eating with him. I'll tell you top bloke he is. Sitting on a fucking table with about maybe 10 blokes on it. They're big tables, like five can sit on that side, five can sit on that side. Fuck, I'm eating. I have a situation with someone, all right? Cunt's chewing like a camel. I have words with this bloke. This bloke's a hard cunt. Fucking next minute, it's fucking on, it's erupted. Me and this guy fucking boom, 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 smacking it out in the middle of the unit. Shouldn't do that in the middle of the unit. Should always be in a cell. But I was just fucking angry. I just whack, put one on this cunt. Fuck, for squatty, jump straight up. Fuck, and this guy was going all right with me too. It was going bang, 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 back and forward. Oh, fuck, I don't even know what was going on to him, Drew. I ended up just fucking, yeah, just smacking it up. In up, Squally jumps on the cunt with me. Next minute, fuck, Pasquale's got it. And this is a different race. Pasquale's Italian. He just doesn't belong to no race. He's just a one-man show. But I was backing him up. Grabs him like that, fucking boom, boom, boom. We're smashing this cunt. <laughs> After the fight, a few boys got dirty. They're like, bro, what the fuck did he jump in at this, that? Anyway, 
this is, this is the way Pasquale was. Straight away, he jumped up. Yeah, shouldn't have done it. Pick your fucking best. Who wants to have a crack? Let's go in the cell. Next minute, old mate jumps up. Bang, bang, in the cell. Smack it out. It was constant with Pasquale like that. Like, I could tell you a million fucking things about this bloke. I've never seen him as a dog. I've never seen him talk like a dog. Fucking all I've ever seen off this bloke. A lot of people say he's a give up. He's this and that. I've never seen paperwork. Never seen him back down to any cunt. Mate, I'm fucking telling you First hand, when Pasquale died, we were not friends. <clears throat> he was bagging the fuck out of me two girls. We had a massive fight and a few waitresses in Sydney will confirm this. It was on one of their phones. He talked shit about me. Didn't know I was with him. I said, fucking call him up. Called him up. Just swearing at each other. So I'm not sitting here defending him because he's my mate. I'm defending him because you got to say what's fucking right in this world. Everyone calls this bloke a fucking dog. They put memes off a pig's head with his body. God rest his fucking soul, mate. Let me tell you, bloke was a stand-up bloke from anything I seen off the cunt. I was even once in Melbourne, yeah? This is when I was a nomad. He rings me up. He goes, um, come up to Melbourne, bro. We'll party for the weekend. I said, yeah, I swear. Come up. I get to the hotel. There was a few bikers from other clubs there. I walk into the hotel and there was a street crew there from Melbourne. <clears throat> I felt the tension there. I just felt fucking, I just I had a feeling like something's going to go down. So I go to Pasquale, I messaged him. We had like um, Blackberries, not Cyphers, like Blackberries back then. I messaged him on his Blackberry. I said, brother, you fucking bring me here. These blokes all here. I go, yeah, I don't know these guys personally, but I got a feeling that it's going to be all right. Can you meet me in the bathroom? So he, he's read it. I've looked at his reaction. I could tell from his reaction, he's getting fired up now too because he thinks something's going to go down. He gets up, goes to the bathroom. I follow him to the bathroom. He's like, what's going on? I go, fuck, bro. I feel these cunts are looking at me. He goes, bro, you're paranoid. These guys are fucking mad cunts. They've got their drama and I'm with you all the fucking way, bro. He goes, I'll fucking kill every cunt if you want. I was like, no, no, no. I said, I don't know none of them, but I've got a feeling they want to fucking, they want to drama with me. Anyway, he goes to me, fuck it. He goes, We'll go out for like a couple of hours and we'll ditch them, then we'll go do our thing. We'll spend the hour and we'll ditch them. All the guys there were good blacks, too, straight out. Went fuck with. They didn't get smart. Shook hands, jumped in a bus together. Yeah, we had a fucking bus, what God. Got in a bus, went to a few clubs, went from bar to bar. I was with for a couple of hours. I just didn't feel comfortable. I don't know why he's feeling. Stupidly, we left this group and we get into a drama of these fucking other guys. These guys were all fucking good blacks. I just apparently cut racked off my fucking head, thinking everyone's against me. So we leave them, we go on our own, we pick up a couple of girls, we're sitting there, Pasquale's got a big ego, it's about six o'clock in the morning. These girls go, oh, come back to the hotel, this guy's got a room, right, right, I'm thinking, yeah, it's from Melbourne, fuck, why not? We go back to their fucking hotel, next minute, what even bikers? Just steroid heads, fucking, they're all racking up, everyone's getting along, next minute, fuck up, Pasquale's in the kitchen, boom, 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 laying this guy out. Fuck, I've jumped over the kitchen bench, grabbed this guy, boom, boom, grabbed the fuck. I think it was an Astro, if I remember, I can't remember what it was. Smashed on the guy's head, smashed his fucking whole fucking hotel up. Get in the lift, he's busted up, fuck it, I'm cut open too, got no shirt on because it cuts ripped my shirt. Fuck, I go, bro, what happened? He goes, fuck, I don't know, bro. He goes, I've got a feeling he had a drama with you. I said, me? So he's another fucking bike, he's got a drama with this car. I said, let's get back up there, because now we smashed him, let's just go. So you know, I went back to the fucking hotel, and my cousin Mick starts ringing me up next day. He said, what the fuck have you been doing there? I go, who the fuck told you? He goes, doesn't matter. Get on a plane, come back to Sydney. You fucking dickhead, you're a trial maker. Anyway, I fuck, come back to Sydney. Me and Squally were seeing each other regularly. And then we had that fall and that didn't just stop talking to him. I never wanted to get him because we grew up together in prison, me and this guy. You know what I'm saying? And he's a fucking cocky cunt. He was fucking bridging up on the phone. I'm bridging up. And he's like, you wait till I see you, can't. we're going to fucking have it out. And I was living in Piedmont, he was living in the city, I think he was living in Leichhardt. But the cunt was in the city every day, I'm thinking, fuck, we're going to see each other, it's going to be on. <clears throat> Never bumped into him, and then when I heard he died, I was fucking upset straight out. I was honestly fucking upset. Like, words can't even comprehend how upset I was. Like, even like, boys around me at that time, they're like, Bro, you told us you don't even fucking talk to this cunt and you're going to smash him on site. I said, yeah, I was just talking shit, man. I just always thought I'd have time to sort it out with this guy and we'll rekindle our friendship. When he fucking died, I got upset, eh? Straight out. 
and fucking the guys that allegedly killed him end up becoming friends with my brother in jail. I got no problem with them guys. Whatever happened between them, Squally was never a member of my crew, so I can't hold a grudge against those guys. <clears throat> I think one or two of them's friends with my brother. My brother said they're good blokes. I don't know, fucking, but yeah, it's always upsetting when I hear about Pasquale straight out. It just, I'm the type of person that if I like you, I like you. I can't get that out of my heart. Like, I've been around boys and they mention his name and fucking, I, I tell them straight away, I say, oh yeah, fucking talk shit about this bloke around me, brother. I said, I don't give a fuck what you think you know about this bloke. He's fucking dead now. Don't talk shit about this cunt. Even like a few months ago, someone was talking shit about his brother. I don't know what the conversation came. I said, I pulled them up too. I said, oi, don't talk shit about these boys. They're fucking dead and they're good cunts, bruh. They're fucking hard cunts. Just because you hear these other blokes talking about them, don't get on the bandwagon. Bruh, please don't say it in front of me. And the guy's like, yes, sweet, respect that, bro. You know what I mean? So fucking like, that's my story about Pasquale, you know? And fucking, yeah, that's where I wanted to let it out. And... My podcasts are going to be like this. I'm not going to answer 50 questions. Like this one went on for a while now. It's been almost 20 minutes. So I'm going to wrap this one up. And every day I'll, I'll answer a different question. I'll tell you about a different scenario. Or not every day, maybe every couple of days. But I'll keep my podcast going. And then I'll do proper ones with Mick. Or if he's prefer me to keep doing them solo. I'll just keep doing them solo. You just send in the questions and I'll tell you. I might see if there's one more question I can go for. It's been 17 minutes. Let me see another question. What else do you want me to answer? Let me see. One more question. <clears throat> People were asking me, what was the first day feel like when I was locked up as a child? I was in juvie. I'm gonna wrap this up real quick, but I'm gonna I'll get into more juvenile stories and more stories as the weeks go go. But for now, I'm gonna tell you about Cobham. I was on a fucking prison van, whatever you want to call it. All right, and. I'll never forget, management stopped in front of the Cobham Court, or whatever it's called, um, was it Cobham Courts? I can't remember, what, yeah, I think it was Cobham Courts. And my mum and my auntie and my sisters were standing in the car park. And it's, it's not like adult jail, they put in these little vans. So anyway, they had parked the van on an angle where I could see my mum, and I swear to God, she was bawling her fucking eyes out. And my auntie was crying and my sisters were crying. I was a fucking young kid. I can't remember how old I was, I was a young boy. Everyone I was in the fucking van. I had my head down. Mate, I felt like I was gonna fucking cry. I was that fucking emotional. Seeing my mum crying and that. And then fucking they take me into the juvie. Mate, that first night, fucking I can't even tell you what I went through that first night. You're talking about a Middle Eastern family. Growing up, everything's about seeing each other every day. Even though I wasn't living at home, but I'd still go past seeing my mum. To be in a prison, no one, I'm not going to see them. I'm a young kid, still in fucking high school, year seven or eight, I think it was. Like, I just can't even tell you what the feeling is. Like, yeah, just emotions were going crazy. Like, one minute you want to fucking cry. One minute you want to punch the wall, rip your hair out. It's, it's an unsettling feeling, especially, I remember that night, I didn't shower, because there was no shower in the cell. This juvenile coven, I remember where I was at, they had no fucking shower in the wing I was in. You'd have to go out and shower in the unit. So there was no shower, it was just a little sink, a little cup that big. I just thought, what the fuck is going on? You know what I mean? Was, and there was no TV, and fuck, you could hear the crickets, and everything was quiet, and you could just, it wasn't pleasant, eh? I remember just thinking, fuck. Yeah, it was just 
It wasn't good, eh? Straight the fuck out. So, I'll leave that there. The videos might be long ones, might be short ones. I'm not sure how it's going to go, but I'll make sure I always drop you something. It's not going to be like the podcast on the YouTube where it was once a week because I used to have to wait for you see to edit it. Now I'm not editing nothing, just raw videos, and I'm just dropping them on my channel. So yeah, if you want to watch, keep subscribing. If you want to ask questions, inbox me, send me your numbers. I'll, I'll, if I see the message, because I get heaps of messages on Instagram, whichever ones I see, I'll click on it, I'll call you, I'll even put you on speaker, you just can ask me, like right now, how we are now, you just can have it on speaker, ask me questions as well. I hope you enjoy this way forward. Love you all. Take care of yourselves.